Have you ever wondered how advanced the ancient civilizations were in terms of urban planning? Let's explore. Today we're stepping back in time to a civilization that has left an indelible mark on the pages of history with its stunning advancements. The Indus Valley Civilization. Now when we think of urban planning today, we picture skyscrapers, intricate road networks, and sprawling metropolises. But imagine a civilization, thousands of years ago, that had its own marvels of urban planning. Yes, we're talking about the Indus Valley Civilization, a society that flourished around 5,000 years ago. What set the Indus Valley Civilization apart was its highly sophisticated urban planning. They had well-laid-out, grid-patterned cities, much like our modern city blocks. But what's truly remarkable is their advanced sewage and drainage systems. They had a network of covered drains running along the main streets and individual homes. Each house was equipped with its own bathing area and drain facilities, a feat that showcases the exceptional skills of the Indus Valley people in sanitary engineering. Even more fascinating is that their drainage system was not limited to just the cities. Archaeologists have discovered similar systems in smaller towns and even in rural areas. This underlines the extent of their knowledge and the importance they placed on hygiene and sanitation. This advanced urban planning paints a picture of a civilization that was way ahead of its time. It shows us an organized, well-structured society that valued cleanliness, orderliness, and community life. It's a testament to their ingenuity and forward-thinking approach challenging our conventional notions of ancient and primitive. So next time when you marvel at the wonders of modern city planning, remember the Indus Valley Civilization. They were the pioneers who laid the groundwork for urban planning, demonstrating human ingenuity and innovation at its best. Imagine thousands of years ago, the Indus Valley Civilization had already mastered the art of urban planning. Ever heard of a city carved directly into cliffs? Let's journey to Petra, Tucked away in the heart of the Jordanian desert, Petra, an ancient city, beckons with its fascinating allure. This architectural marvel was hewn directly from towering sandstone cliffs, making it a sight that leaves even the most seasoned traveler in awe. But Petra wasn't just a city of beauty. It was a bustling hub of commerce and trade, a testament to the ingenuity and ambition of its builders. Established by the Nabataeans, a nomadic Arab people, Petra was a significant crossroads between Arabia, Egypt, and the Mediterranean. It's remarkable to think that this city, nestled in the arid desert, was once teeming with life and brimming with exotic goods from far-off lands. Spices, silk, ivory, and precious metals were all exchanged here, making Petra a nexus of cultural and economic influence. The city's unique architecture is a testament to the Nabataeans' mastery over their environment. They carved their city directly into the sandstone cliffs, creating a labyrinth of tombs, temples, and dwellings. The most famous of these structures is Al-Khazne, or the Treasury, a towering facade etched with intricate designs. It stands as a silent sentinel, guarding the secrets of this ancient metropolis. But Petra's story isn't just about grandeur and opulence. It's also a tale of survival and adaptation, the Nabataeans developed ingenious methods to harvest and store water, turning their desert home into a thriving oasis. They built cisterns and channels, ensuring the city's survival even during the driest spells. Yet despite its splendor and sophistication, Petra fell into obscurity. Over centuries, it was all but forgotten, only to be rediscovered in the early 19th century by a Swiss explorer. Since then, it has captured the imagination of the world, a symbol of human resilience and creativity. Petra, a city sculpted from sandstone cliffs, truly a wonder of the ancient world. What if I told you the first Mesoamerican writing system wasn't created by the Mayans or the Aztecs? Let's turn back the clock and venture into the heart of ancient Mesoamerica, where a civilization known as the Olmecs thrived. The Olmecs, often dubbed the mother culture of Mesoamerica, were not just pioneers in art and architecture, but they also had a knack for creating complex systems of communication. In fact, they are credited with creating the first Mesoamerican writing system, 
a feat that predates the Mayans and Aztecs. Now imagine a bustling Olmec city located in today's Mexico, where life revolved around agriculture, trade, and religion. In the heart of this city, a scribe carefully etches symbols onto a piece of jade or basalt. These symbols, or glyphs, were not mere decorations. They were a form of written language, a way to record history, transactions, and perhaps even stories and myths. This Olmec script is an intricate system of signs and symbols, representing both sounds and ideas. It's a remarkable achievement, especially when you consider that this was happening around 3,000 years ago when most of the world was still using simple pictographs or oral traditions to pass down information. But the Olmec script wasn't just a standalone system. It laid the groundwork for future Mesoamerican writing systems. The Mayans, for instance, borrowed heavily from the Olmecs when creating their own sophisticated glyphs. Even the Aztecs, who came much later, showed traces of Olmec influence in their writing. So, while the Olmecs may not be as famous as their successors, their contribution to Mesoamerican culture and history is undeniable. They were the first to take thoughts and ideas and translate them into a written form, a legacy that would shape the course of Mesoamerican civilization for centuries to come. Before the Mayans and Aztecs, the Olmecs were busy penning down history in their unique script. So the next time you marvel at ancient Mesoamerican glyphs, remember to tip your hat to the Olmecs, the original scribes of this part of the world. Water management in an ancient city. Let's dive into Mohenjo-Daro's story. In the heart of the Indus Valley, nestled between the fertile plains of modern-day Pakistan, lies the remnants of an ancient city that was way ahead of its time. This city is Mohenjo-Daro, a marvel of the ancient world, and a testament to the ingenuity of its inhabitants. Mohenjo-Daro was not just any ancient city. It was a city that had an advanced understanding of water management, a concept that many modern cities still struggle with. Imagine over 4,000 years ago, a civilization that had already mastered the science of water management. The city was equipped with a complex network of wells, water chutes, and drains, showcasing an impressive understanding of hydraulic engineering. These weren't just rudimentary systems, no, they were meticulously planned and carefully built, designed to provide clean water and sanitation facilities to its inhabitants. One of the city's crowning achievements was its public baths, known as the Great Bath. This large rectangular pool was lined with baked bricks and had two wide staircases at either end. It was more than just a place for bathing. It was a hub for socialization, a testament to the importance of water in their daily lives. But the water management system didn't stop at the Great Bath. The city was crisscrossed with a network of covered drains designed to carry wastewater away from the city. This advanced sewage system is a testament to the city's commitment to cleanliness and hygiene, a concept that was far ahead of its time. Mohenjo-Daro's water management was not just about functionality. It was a reflection of the city's philosophy, one that placed a high value on cleanliness, community, and sustainability. It was a city that understood the importance of water, not just as a resource, but as a vital part of their culture and their way of life. Mohenjo-Daro, a city where water management was a way of life. Ready to explore a culture rich in vibrant frescoes and advanced architecture? Welcome to ancient Crete. The Minoans, an ancient civilization that thrived on the island of Crete from around 2700 to 1400 BC, were renowned for their vibrant frescoes and advanced architecture. These remarkable people left a rich cultural imprint that continues to intrigue us today. Let's dive into the world of Minoan frescoes. These colorful paintings were a significant part of Minoan culture and were found in abundance on walls of palaces, villas, and even tombs. Their themes ranged from nature, with lively depictions of plants and animals, to complex scenes of religious rituals and daily life. The frescoes were painted using a wet painting technique where pigments were applied to wet plaster, allowing the colors to sink in, resulting in a long-lasting, vibrant finish. But the Minoans were not just artists. They were also architectural pioneers. The palaces they built were sprawling complexes with multiple levels, intricate floor plans, and even indoor plumbing. The Palace of Knossos, the largest Minoan palace, 
was an architectural marvel of its time, featuring grand courtyards, labyrinthine corridors, and even a theater. It's a testament to the Minoans' advanced engineering skills and their sense of aesthetics. Interestingly, the Minoans didn't fortify their palaces with walls or moats, suggesting they lived in a relatively peaceful society. This lack of fortification, combined with their vibrant art, paints a picture of a civilization that was more interested in fostering culture and creativity than in warfare. But like all great civilizations, the Minoans eventually declined. While the reasons for their downfall remain a mystery, their influence on subsequent cultures, particularly the Mycenaeans of mainland Greece, is undeniable. The Minoans leaving behind a colorful imprint of their existence. From their vibrant frescoes to their advanced architecture, the Minoans remind us of the rich tapestry of human history filled with creativity, innovation, and the enduring desire to leave a lasting mark on the world. What if the best view of a piece of art is from the sky? Let's soar over the Nazca Lines. In the arid, windless plains of Peru, an ancient civilization left behind a mystery that continues to baffle us today. Here, the Nazca people etched enormous geoglyphs into the desert floor, their complexity and enormity defying comprehension. These are the Nazca Lines, an awe-inspiring testament to the creative prowess of an ancient civilization. Carved into the earth between 200 BC and 600 AD, these lines form over 800 straight lines, 300 geometric figures, and 70 biomorphs, including a hummingbird, a spider, a monkey, and a human figure known as the astronaut. Each one is a marvel of precision and scale, with the largest figures stretching over 200 meters across. Yet the true genius of the Nazca lines lies not in their size, but in their placement. These massive drawings were created on a canvas so vast that they can only be fully appreciated from the sky. Imagine the challenge of crafting these intricate figures without the benefit of an aerial perspective, a feat akin to drawing a detailed picture on a football field with your eyes closed. It's a mystery how the Nazca people accomplished this. Some suggest they used simple tools and a basic knowledge of geometry. Others argue for more fantastical explanations, like ancient hot air balloons or extraterrestrial guidance. Regardless of how they did it, the fact remains that the Nazca lines are a testament to the ingenuity and audacity of their creators. Peru's Nazca lines are more than just massive desert drawings. They're a message from the past, a testament to the human spirit's boundless creativity and ambition. They remind us that thousands of years ago, an ancient civilization dared to dream big, leaving behind a grand canvas only visible from the sky. The Nazca Lines, a grand canvas only visible from the sky. Ever marveled at the grandeur of the Egyptian pyramids? Let's uncover their secrets. These colossal structures built by the ancient Egyptians are more than just lavish tombs for their pharaohs. They are a testament to the advanced engineering skills of a civilization that thrived thousands of years ago. The Egyptians constructed these pyramids with precision and ingenuity. These aren't just piles of stones, mind you. Each pyramid is a marvel of mathematical accuracy and architectural brilliance. The Great Pyramid of Giza, for instance, was the tallest man-made structure for over 3,800 years. It stands as a testament to the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians, who managed to build it with such precision that even today's architects and engineers marvel at its perfection. Imagine hauling massive blocks of stone, each weighing several tons, without the aid of modern machinery. It's a task that seems impossible even today. Yet the Egyptians not only managed it, but did so with such skill that the pyramids have stood the test of time. The pyramids also tell us about the spiritual beliefs of the ancient Egyptians. They believed in an afterlife, a belief that was deeply ingrained in their culture. The pyramids were designed to be eternal homes for their pharaohs, filled with all the necessities they would need in the afterlife. These massive structures were not merely tombs, but gateways to eternity. And let's not forget the iconic Sphinx that guards the Giza pyramids. Carved from a single block of limestone, this mythical creature with the body of a lion and the head of a human 
is yet another testament to the exceptional craftsmanship of the Egyptians. In conclusion, the Egyptian pyramids are more than just massive structures. They are a symbol of a civilization's remarkable engineering skills, spiritual beliefs, and cultural heritage. They continue to intrigue us, reminding us of the incredible capabilities of our ancestors. The Egyptian pyramids, a testament to their engineering prowess. A city preserved in ash for centuries. Let's step back in time to Pompeii. Our journey takes us to the city of Pompeii, a bustling metropolis of the ancient Roman Empire. A city once teeming with life, vibrant with the sounds of merchants selling their wares, children playing, and the hustle and bustle of daily life. But in the blink of an eye, everything changed. In 79 AD, the nearby Mount Vesuvius erupted, spewing a deadly cloud of ash, pumice, and gases into the sky. The inhabitants of Pompeii had little time to escape. The city was quickly buried under a thick layer of volcanic ash, preserving it in a state of suspended animation for nearly 2,000 years. The buildings, artifacts, and even the bodies of its citizens were encased in ash, creating a haunting snapshot of life in the first century AD. When Pompeii was rediscovered in the 18th century, it offered archaeologists a unique window into the past. The city was remarkably well-preserved, with buildings, frescoes, and artifacts intact providing an unparalleled view of Roman life. The streets of Pompeii, once filled with the echoes of Latin conversation, now tell a silent tale of everyday life and sudden disaster. As we walk through the ancient city, we can see the Roman architecture in its full grandeur. The public baths, the amphitheater, the villas of the wealthy, all frozen in time. The frescoes that adorn the walls of homes and public buildings give us a glimpse into the aesthetic sensibilities of the Romans. The artifacts found in the city, from kitchen utensils to jewelry, tell us about their daily lives, their tastes, and their occupations. But perhaps the most poignant reminders of Pompeii's tragic end are the body casts. These haunting figures, forever immortalized in their final moments, serve as a stark reminder of the power of nature and the fragility of human life. Pompeii, a city frozen in time, offering a unique window into ancient Rome. Ever seen a house built on a cliff? Let's climb up to the ancestral Puebloan dwellings. The ancestral Puebloans, a civilization that thrived from around the 12th century BC to the 13th century AD, were renowned for their use of the landscape. They fashioned homes right out of the cliffs in the southwestern regions of what is now the United States. These houses were not just simple caves, mind you, they were complex structures with multiple rooms, kivas or ceremonial spaces and storage areas. The largest of these dwellings at Mesa Verde, known as Cliff Palace, had over 200 rooms and 23 kivas. Imagine the sheer ingenuity and labor it would take to carve such a structure into a cliff face. These cliff dwellings were not just homes, they were communities, often housing multiple families. They provided protection from enemies and the elements and the cliffs overhang even offered a bit of shade during the hot summer months. The ancestral Puebloans didn't just stop at dwellings either. They etched petroglyphs into the cliff walls, leaving behind a record of their culture and beliefs. These images tell tales of their everyday life, their spiritual beliefs, and their understanding of the cosmos. And let's not forget about the farming. Despite living in arid regions with sparse rainfall, the ancestral Puebloans engineered terraces and check dams to grow crops like corn, beans, and squash. They were masters of their environment, adapting and thriving in a landscape that many would find inhospitable. But around the end of the 13th century, something happened. The cliff dwellings were abandoned. Scholars still debate the reasons for this abrupt departure. Was it due to drought, conflict, or a combination of both? The mystery adds another layer to the intrigue of these ancient cliff dwellers. The ancestral Puebloans carving homes out of cliffs. Their legacy is a testament to human ingenuity, resilience, and the ability to adapt and flourish, even in the face of challenging landscapes. Fancy a civilization with its own standardized system of weights and measures? Let's weigh in on the Harapan civilization. The Harapans were no ordinary folks, you see. They were part of the larger Indus Valley civilization, 
which thrived around 5,000 years ago in what is now modern-day Pakistan and Northwest India. Now, picture this, you're in a bustling market of a Harappan city. The air is filled with the aroma of spices, the sound of traders haggling, and the sight of goods being exchanged. But there's something different here. Unlike other ancient civilizations, where trade was often a chaotic affair, the Harappan markets were orderly, systematic, and efficient. And the secret to this was their standardized system of weights and measures. Yes, you heard that right. The Harappans had a uniform system of weights and measures that was used throughout their vast civilization. This wasn't a simple or crude system either. It was remarkably sophisticated and precise. In fact, their smallest division, which is roughly equivalent to today's milligram, shows their keen understanding of mathematics and geometry. But why bother with such a system, you might ask? Well, this standardized system was a game changer. It facilitated trade, allowing for fair transactions and fostering economic growth. It's a testament to their high level of organization and indicates the significant role trade played in their society. Moreover, this system wasn't confined to their local markets. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Harappans traded with distant lands. Imagine the influence and reach of a civilization that could standardize measurements, not just within its own borders, but also with its trade partners. So, there you have it. The Harappans weren't just advanced in terms of urban planning or sewage systems. They were pioneers in trade and organization, setting standards that would be followed by civilizations centuries later. The Harappan civilization, where trade and organization were a standard. So, which fact surprised you the most about these lost civilizations? We journeyed from the Indus Valley with its advanced urban planning to the sandstone city of Petra, a major trading hub in its day. We discovered the Olmec's pioneering writing system and marveled at Mohenjo-Daro's water management sophistication. We reveled in the vibrant culture of the Minoans and looked skyward to appreciate the Nazca lines in Peru. We stood in awe of the Egyptian pyramids, a testament to their engineering prowess, and stepped back in time with the preserved city of Pompeii. We admired the cliff dwellings of the ancestral Puebloans and acknowledged the Harappan civilization's organized trade system. Each lost civilization, a world within itself, has left behind a legacy of intriguing facts and unsolved mysteries. The ancient world, it seems, was far from primitive. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, unveiling the mysteries of the ancient world.